Hello, my singing friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm excited today we have another one of our vocal journey files. I'm excited to introduce you to a good friend of mine. I've been having a lot of fun with these vocal journey files, talking to vocalists who have performed professionally and who have great stories about their journey in, uh, in learning how to sing. And so today I'd like to introduce you to a good friend of mine, Janelle Slack Wilson. And uh, before we do that, make sure to hit subscribe and hit the like button below and any comments that you may have. I always love to hear from you. So let me introduce you to my good friend, Janelle. Janelle, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for joining us today. I've been super excited to have you here on the channel and to, to talk to you. I'm so excited to be here. I have always loved you and your family so much, so I'm so excited to get to chat with you for a bit today. It is fun. And even by saying that, there, there's some story behind that. So I'll, I'll just maybe introduce you a little bit and then we'll let you kind of uh, formally introduce your your professional experience, but I've known Janelle for a long, long time since she was a little girl, and uh, and I'm grateful to even be able to say that I started teaching you Janelle when you were about how old? I think six. Yeah, really young. <laughs> Maybe and, younger. Yep. Yeah, and and I will say generally my my studio policy has not been to take children quite that young. Um, oftentimes they just don't have the vocal maturity yet or, or even just the maturity and being able to focus, right? Attention span is pretty short. So I tend not to teach them that young. And your mom approached me and uh, said, oh, my daughter needs to take voice lessons and, and she's really good and she's got a great little voice and yada, yada, yada. All the stuff I hear from parents all the time, right? Oh, my kid walks around the house singing all the time. She just needs voice lessons. I hear it all the time. And that's great. It's great. But I was just thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. But I decided for whatever reason, I thought, well, let's just try it out and see. So I thought we'll do, we'll do a couple test runs, do a few lessons. And I have to admit, I was blown away. I was blown away with the maturity of your voice, even at age six, just your musicality, but also with you were just a big person in a little child's body and your ability to focus. Uh, I just couldn't believe as I started teaching you, you know, I would give you uh, assignments, you know, things to work on and you'd come back the next week and it was done. Music was memorized just like that. And, and I would teach you something technically and you'd come back the next week and you were doing it. I just couldn't believe it. And so you just grew leaps and bounds uh, really um, and I don't use this term lightly, but a child prodigy, really. <laughs> so it was exciting to work with you. So enough about that. And I'm just excited to be able to reconnect here um, and to just talk to you a little bit about not only the journey as I had an opportunity to teach you, but then thereafter, because at a certain point, you and I had to part ways because you went on to bigger and better things. And that's where I'm going to ask you to kind of tell us what happened there in that phase of your life. Definitely. Yeah. So we, we did voice lessons um, for about two years, probably longer, when you actually brought to my attention that uh, Les Mis, Les Miserables, was coming through uh, Salt Lake City, and they were holding open auditions for the children roles. And you said, I think this would be such a great experience for you just to go experience it. And I talked with my mom and 
we decided that, yeah, we would take the day, go spend the day downtown and go get ice cream after. And I loved it. I it was such a fun day. And that just took off from there. I ended up traveling with the National Touring Company of Les Miserables for almost two years um, all over the country. And then that led to an opening in the Broadway company, which uh, they offered to me. So I took it and that I was in New York. I loved it. It was amazing. And that got me an agent, which took me to do a Christmas Carol at Madison Square Garden. I started doing voiceovers for Disney for PB&J Otter, which was a television show uh, back in the day. And I did the touring company of Ragtime as the little girl. That was my role name. And I traveled with that show for about two years. And lots of voiceover work. Just, yeah, I mean, that was, that was kind of my big professional career. I went till I was about 16. By then my family had relocated to Boston. So I just kind of traveled back and forth Boston to New York as often as I could for auditions. Um, and I, I kind of just ended my professional career at about 16. So I kind of just let it be and decided I'm gonna finish high school and pursue my dreams in a couple of years. And, you know, I, I got a Boston vocal teacher that I worked with for a while. And then I think my heart just kind of started to change. And I just knew I didn't really want to go to college for musical performance anymore. I decided I wanted to do communications instead. And I college hopped for a couple of years, which took me to Washington, D.C., which is where we crossed paths randomly Indeed. of all places. <laughs> It was crazy, wasn't it? Across the country. And, uh, and then I finished college up in Utah and met my husband. And we are now in Southern California. And I have two beautiful children. And I'm beginning my vocal journey all over again. Through, I mean, through all of these years, I, music has been such a huge role of my life. I the the feelings through music is a huge part of who I am and it was three years ago I just was feeling that again I was just I've got to sing uh, I, I've got to use this talent just for myself it, for no other reason I don't I don't have any plans of of becoming a big shot singer I just want it for myself and I hooked up with a local lady here that does voice lessons and piano lessons. And I said, help me <laughs> and help, help me learn piano too. I'm actually doing piano lessons too. And it's just been so wonderful to have that music back in my life. It just, it completes me. <laughs> and I think that's one of the wonderful things about music is that <clears throat> in every phase of our life, be it as a child, teenager, young adults, you know, uh, as we have families, and even as we move on into, you know, mid middle age and older, uh, music can be such a fulfilling uh, experience uh, to be able to, either for yourself, just to be able to sit down at the piano and play for yourself, or to be able to share it, you know, like you and I have had opportunities to perform in front of others. And there's, there's a joy in being able to bring happiness, entertainment, experience to other people through music. I just think there's very few other mediums that can as powerfully convey emotion as music does. And I love too that there's so many venues to use your, if you have musical talent that you enjoy sharing, there's so many opportunities for you to do that, whether it be on Broadway or in your church congregation or just singing to your children. I mean, there's so many ways to use that and share that. And I, I love that music can fit so many different um, shapes and sizes of, of, of opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Now you were, you were picked up by the touring company for Les Miserables when, how old were you then? I think I was eight. 
I think I'm maybe nine. Okay. So you're pretty young there. That, <laughs> yes. And I know <clears throat> even between the time we started our voice lessons and you went there, you were also doing some community theater. There. Yes. And yeah. I was singing at um, NBA basketball games, if I recall, <laughs> right? Yeah. Any opportunity I was given to sing, oh, I took it. Yeah, basketball games, baseball games. Of course, that's where my whole career started was in local community theater at Health Center Theater. I did eight productions there. Yeah. Uh, I loved it. It was just oh, one show finished. Well, what's the next one? I'm ready to go. I Any opportunity. I remember singing at fairs. Um, just so many crazy things where it's like, wow, did I really do that? Did I really just stand up on a stage in the middle of a park and sing to whoever stopped to listen? I did, that was me. Yeah, and isn't that interesting? I find, and, and this isn't for all children, but children who really are um, precocious and have natural music abilities, there's very little, what I call stage fright in them. They just stand up and they do it, right? And then mm -hmm. happens to us as we get older. Have you experienced that? I think most Definitely. of us, we all of a sudden get this self-consciousness. Yes, it is, uh, it is a confidence thing that I, I actually struggle with it greatly in my life today. I always have. And yeah, that didn't change until maybe it was closer to my teenage years. You know, you really start to get yeah. a little insecure. Uh, you start to question what other people think of you. And it's no longer just this carefree, sing your heart out. And it can be, that's what I'm striving to work for. In fact, I call my voice lessons my therapy sessions because that's what it is for me. It's therapy. It helps me come out of my shell. It makes me less nervous. And that's something that every singer should work on is confidence. Just be confident in your voice, be confident in its power and, and it will help you. It will take you places. Yeah. I love that because again, another wonderful reason to, to sing, right? Is, is, it is therapy. I really, I, I've been amazed in all the years that I've been teaching voice lessons. I, my wife and I joke that I, I should be paid a lot more because I'm also a therapist. You end up so talking, true. Right? Because so much comes out when you sing. Singing is about emotion, right? And about the, the human experience and, and bringing it out of yourself and, and anyways, connecting with it. And, and then all the other things that happen, like you said, just being the self-awareness and sometimes becoming very self-conscious or having confidence issues or whatever. So it is really an interesting, again, journey um, and how to connect with that, but not let it stop you, right? Definitely. I, that's something I wanted to share in this interview is that finding that emotional connection with singing is far more important than technique. Um, uh, wow, that's you're probably cringing when I say that. I don't mean it a hundred percent. I mean, technique absolutely is important. You've got to, you have to use your voice properly or you're going to hurt it. I mean, technique is so important. Um, your, your vowel sounds so important. All of these things are important. But if you are singing with the perfect technique and you have no emotional connection, then it, it just sounds empty. It's just somebody singing. But yeah. as soon as that emotional connection is there, that's what the audience feels is the emotion. Yeah. And I love when I'm picking songs. I love picking songs that I really can find a connection with. Or, or if I don't pick the song, I still find some way. There's some way that I can flip this word to fit me personally. Um, so that I can convey whatever that emotion is. And that's what the audience will keep and hold with them is that feeling. Yeah. They won't know that you slightly were flat and they won't know any of those other things. 
they'll just know that feeling that they had when you sing. Yeah, I love that. And, and no, I don't cringe at that at all. As a matter of fact, that's what I promote as I teach music is it really is the marriage of the two things, of technique. Yes. Technique, like you said, is important for safety and, and just for overall, you know, the pleasantness of the voice. <clears throat> but that alone isn't sufficient. Uh, we've got to couple it with what I call the artistry, which is the emotion, the connection, the feeling. Um, and, and without it, <clears throat> the technique itself can be very empty, very sterile, um, robotic almost. Um, I love what you just said there. Perfect. Yeah, I, that's something that's my, probably one of my largest challenges right now is this combination of imperfection and, and this lack of self-confidence and, and reconnecting to those emotions and the feelings and recognizing that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not really nice when it, when it is that perfect alignment. Um, and that's obviously what I strive for, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. So right. long as I'm feeling it, that's what, that's what I'm trying to take away now in my vocal journey. I love that. And, and I would say too, that we're not trying to create clones, vocal clones, where we don't want everyone to sound exactly alike. Right. But, you know, what you bring to your vocal music that is uniquely Janelle is what makes your voice Janelle, right? right. We don't want it to sound like everybody else and just kind of cookie cutter. And so we, like you said, we do want the technique. I think there's a range that we want to be in, right? As far as, uh, you know, so that it sounds nice and we don't want diction that's way, you know, way over here and tonal qualities that are way, way out there. But at the same time, we want you to maintain your own unique vocal qualities because it what, it's what makes you, you. Yeah. I love that. When you had an opportunity to perform, of course you were, you were a child um, then, but you had an opportunity to work with really some great performers on stage and to be with them regularly, to see them in rehearsals, um, music rehearsals, the, the, you know, on stage. What, what were some takeaways? What were some things you learned just by being with and observing some of those really great performers? A big thing that I learned was realizing that your growth doesn't just stop when you make the show that you're auditioning for. It doesn't end there. There's more growth. There's more learning. I didn't make that connection until I realized that the dancers in the show, whenever we'd go to a new city, they'd find a local dance studio and go take a class just for fun. But it was continuing their growth. It was helping them learn new things. And I think with voice, obviously not as easy with traveling, but certainly doable, um, where we need to continually grow and strengthen our voice. And having worked with so many different vocal coaches through my life and at different stages of my life, it's just amazing how much I forget and new things. It, it just, it's just, it was really eye opening to me to realize like, wow, there's so much more that I can learn to help me be a better singer. And I, I really loved that growth aspect. I love that thought. And you know, in, in today's day and age of technology, uh, ability to do this kind of video conferencing really opens up a whole new world for us to be able to reach out and um, and continue to get that training, uh, no matter where you're at. Uh, if you have a vocal coach that you really like and connect with, you can stay with him or her no matter where you're traveling because you can meet like this. And I've loved that. I have vocal students who have gone off to college and um, I, we still do lessons on a regular basis because we can do it that way. And, and for an accessibility. I know there are some people out there who really would love to get 
uh, quality vocal training, but it just may not be available in the place where they live. Maybe they're in a very rural area or an area where they just can't find someone, but this kind of technology allows us to do it. And that's, I think that's fantastic. What advice would you give um, someone who is really wanting to pursue uh, professional performance? Do you have any, and this can be from the past, it can be current, who are some of your greatest vocal inspirations? Some of my greatest vocal inspirations, I have a few from a, a bit of a wide spectrum. I think a lot of some of the famous Broadway singers at the time when I was in New York, uh, Linda Etter, oh, amazing. Yes. I mean, she's just, I've been watching videos of her recently because I'm um, learning one of the songs that she did. And I just, she just nailed it every time, every performance, her voice, just her range, everything just amazes me. Um, and then some of the people that I worked with personally, there's a lady, her name's Rebecca Eichenberger, and she is just going strong today. She just recently was doing a performance at Lincoln Center. And I just think of me being so lucky to sit backstage and listen to her singing over the speakerphone. I mean, it was, she just was amazing. And, and then to throw in an odd one <laughs> is Ben Folds. Ben Folds, I admire so, so much. And I admire him because he is not a perfect singer and he will, he'll say that. He, I recently read his book and he knows that he's not a great singer. Pianist, I don't know if there's a better pianist in the world. He's so amazing. And, and the fact that you can still connect so much to his music, even though he's probably not singing the notes correctly all the time, but I just, I'm so impressed with his musical talent and in concert, he is a fascinating performer. He's so fun to watch. Seeing his performance is so worth it. <laughs> he's such a great performer. And I, I just always remember that when I feel like I have flaws, when I feel like I'm just not nailing the song and I just want to be better, I can remember it's okay. I don't have to be perfect because Ben Folds isn't perfect. I know that's so silly, but I really love him. My voice teacher says that he's my, my musical crush. So, <laughs> <laughs> and he is, I love him. He's great. That's awesome. Well, Janelle, thanks so much. It's been so fun talking to you about this, reminiscing, and and I, I love that you talk about your renewed vocal journey. I think all of us continue on that journey. I don't think it's, you ever reach the destination. Um, different phases of our life offer new opportunities to grow and develop and to share, and you've been a great example of that. So thanks again for your time. Thank you so much. It's been so fun to prepare for this and reminisce on my life journey to where I am today. It's, it's really special to me to, to have this talent, not to say that I'm talented, but, but to have the ability to sing and to just learn and grow with it. And it's, it's been a fun journey for me. Absolutely. Fun to reconnect with you. Glad to still call you friend. That's fun. <laughs>